Title, Christine, Part 1. Learning from Adult Role Models Who Are Blind or Low Vision Presented by Outreach Programs, the Colorado School for the Deaf and the Blind. The CSDB logo is displayed with the tagline, Learning, Thriving, Leading. Our presenter, Christine, is standing in front of a wall in a university commons area. My name is Christine McGordy. I have Lever's congenital amaurosis, which is a retinal degenerative disease. I have had, as a child, some vision, so I could recognize colors and, and I could see things that were contrast, so light and dark, those kinds of things. Um, the prognosis for Lever's is pretty much total blindness by mid to late 20s. I actually still have a little bit of light perception at this point in my life. Um, I had a really interesting uh, upbringing around my parents and my blindness. I, I was not diagnosed as being visually impaired until I was about three. And my mom, when I talked to her about it today, she says she kind of notice that I, I was kind of something was a little off. I wouldn't track really well, but she wasn't exactly sure what was going on. And it wasn't until I was about three years old that I went to the doctor and they put some really thick Coke bottle glasses on me. And my mother says that I came home with my glasses and I went to my toy box and I picked up every toy in the toy box and just, just looked at it and she said it, it was like a wondrous thing for me to be able to sort of see these toys. So up until three I had kind of been having to figure it out my, myself. I um, have been in the workplace for over 12 years now. I moved up from budget analyst to budget supervisor and uh, now I'm at the State Department of Public Health and Environment's budget office and I am their budget manager. Uh, I've supervised people. I've, I've been very successful. I finished, I put myself through college, I put myself through graduate school, and now I live here in Denver. My family is back east and I live alone. So I, I have a lot of independence and a lot of success in my life. Title, Advice for Parents. So in terms of thoughts for parents, I think based on my experience, one thing that is really, really critical is to find the right line between helping a blind child, a visually impaired child, and, and doing too much for them. When I was in, in college, I did a lot of research and I wrote my undergraduate thesis on self-fulfilling prophecy. And uh, we did some research around blind people and how other people's expectations had an effect on the blind people. And it really was very um, powerful to see how when people treat blind people differently, they, they really do not have, they don't get the experience, they don't get the opportunity, they don't ever learn how to do things, and so they never know how to do things. I remember I spent a summer in Louisiana at their rehabilitation training center, and there was a young man there who had never done anything in terms of daily living skills in, in independence in the kitchen and had no idea how to cut things, how to even make a sandwich. And so it's really important to find a way to encourage blind kids to, to try things and to give them the opportunity to figure it out. It, it's always going to be easier for a parent of, of a sighted kid or a blind kid to, to do things for the kid until they learn how to do it. But it's 
it has some really negative long-term effects. I remember when I was a child, um, the, the teacher of the visually impaired was working with my mother in this same area of sort of independence in the kitchen and learning how to bake things. And I remember one of the things my mother was struggling with was I made a big mess. <laughs> Um, flour, when we were making cookies, flour would be everywhere, and, and I remember the TVI's solution there was to, to get sort of a, almost like a cookie sheet kind of tray, and, and so that kind of contained the, the ingredients, so they weren't going quite as far afield from where they ought to be, and I remember that, I still remember that, that cookie sheet, and mixing ingredients and um, learning how to do those things and it's really really important that that we be allowed to figure out how to do things and that we get that experience because certain things if they're if if you don't learn how to do them as children it's always going to be a struggle to learn how to do them so for parents, I think, I, th I think that's got to be really hard to want to take care of a child um, and want to protect them and to find the right line between protecting and letting them kind of go out and get a few bumps and a few bruises. Title, Interpersonal Skills. Most people have never met a blind person, and most people don't know what to do, and they don't want to do the wrong thing. So using humor, telling people, being real clear about what would be helpful and what isn't helpful, I find that it, it's, a, it's a little bit better if I kind of take charge a little bit. I put folks at ease, because they just don't know what to do, and they don't want to say the wrong thing. So to learn to be a little bit um, assertive in terms of helping people to know what my needs are so that, so that they can be more comfortable is a really great thing. For a long time, I, I didn't want to, I, I tried to minimize blindness and, and so I was a little bit passive and I didn't want to tell people what to do and I kind of didn't want to even bring it up. I just kind of wanted to sweep it under the rug. And I find it's really a kindness to other people to, to give them some information because they're really feeling they just don't know what to do and they don't want to do the wrong thing. And I, I think that that set of interpersonal skills that, that I'm talking about here is so important um, for blind people. people. People don't know what to do and they don't feel comfortable and I, I believe a significant part of my success in the workplace is that I have pretty good social skills. I look at people when I talk to them, and that's a big, big deal. I remember having a teacher of the visually impaired when I was first, my very first TVI, and going into her office and her putting her finger under my chin and saying, look at me when you talk to me. I, don't know. I I never could see enough to see faces or to read facial expressions or to read to see people's eyes, but that lesson stuck for me, and it really is critical. Um, it makes sighted folks pretty uncomfortable if you don't look at them, and if people are uncomfortable, especially in an interview setting or a job situation, you're you're not as likely to get the opportunity to get in there and show them what you can really do. Um, so for me, eye contact, using humor, having the ability to make people feel more comfortable is, I think, the most important, uh, the most important set of skills. And that comes from having confidence in yourself and being able to stand up for yourself and say what you need and not being too shy and not being too passive. All of those sort of Emotional well-being, interpersonal skills are really, really, really important. 
Learning from adult role models who are blind or low vision has been a production of the Colorado School for the Deaf and the Blind, 33 North Institute Street, Colorado Springs, Colorado, 80903-719-578-2100, www.csdb.org. Special thanks to Regis University for the use of the Denver Tech Center campus as a filming location. Videography by Deb Branch and Sean Levier, copyright 2014. Audio description, Jim Olson, editing assistants, Diane Kevington, Dr. Laura Douglas, captioning, Neil Anthony Thomas, Corey McCormick, transcription, Eleanor Vasquez.